do a disservice to the court by forgetting to present evidence! You're right about that! I almost forgot! <laughs> well, he's still an airhead, I will say that. First, I present Mr. Kill... I can't even remember how he pronounced it again. <laughs> autopsy report! I present the autopsy report! The court accepts it, this piece of evidence into the court record. The autopsy report added to the court record, which... Let's see. Type report submitted as evidence by Winston Payne has all information regarding Kanaloroff's death. And then when we check... Let's see. Victim Bob Kanal Kanuloroff. Uh, age 47, one shot to the brain, um, time of death, July 22nd, 2013, 10.45 to 11.45, okay, oh, wait, oh, wow, wait, what's, what's this, what the heck's this, and this, what the heck is this, it looks like he got, like, strangled, too. Like, you can't... S well, this is the front side, this is the back side. There's nothing on the feet or anything, so that's why I'm not really caring too much. What's this? Well. Okay. All what More? Oh, wow. Um, The entry point is the forehead and came out directly on the back. There is also a small gunpowder burn on his forehead, shape of a shuriken. I noticed that. This confirms that this was an execution-style killing. Also, the victim had bruises on his stomach and chest. The chest bruise confirms that this was a heart punch that temporarily paralyzed the victim. There were welts on the victim's neck, showing that the victim was choked. I thought that was okay. All right, so... Wait, I was not done with that. Okay, so... This is the front... He was shot execution style to the front, and bullet went directly through the head. He was strangled, and he had bruised. He had a punch in the f stomach and chest. The chest bruise confirms that this was a heart punch. Okay, so, and this right here was the heart punch that paralyzed him. Okay. Uh, let's go back to that. I present the gun and the bullet that were found on the crime scene, too! Interesting. The court accepts this, these pieces of evidence to the court record. Alright, so when we look at the court record, we got the gun, which is a Colt 45 revolver that was found on the crime scene, shot twice, has one overlapping set of unidentified fingerprints. Hmm. Then we got the bullet. Uh, bullet. The bullet description's actually going past. I'll read it though. Um, bullet that was found on the scene of the crime. It was found outside the body with no traces of DNA. Rifling markings match the gun. That's what that says at the very bottom. Um, hmm. That's weird. No DNA? Well, that means this was shot twice, and one of the shots didn't actually go through. So the other shot could be some... Hmm, that's weird. All right. I also present this... Holy crap, man! Quit throwing it... Quit throwing evidence at me! I also present this newspaper clipping explaining the crime scene. That's odd. Why would you need to present the newspaper clipping to describe the crime? Well, Your Honor, somebody in the police force forgot to bring in the official report this morning. Wow! Hey! I had nothing to do with that, pal! Anyway, the newspaper clipping outlines exactly what happened that night. Everything in the clipping is the same information in our police report. Consider this our report! This is awfully suspicious. I don't think it's possible that either one could be this irresponsible. Knowing the old guy, though, he would not forge evidence. I hope that is the case. Well, 
<clears throat> I know his brother would forge evidence because dual destinies and all, but don't think Winston Payne would, but you never know in this. This piece of evidence is very questionable, Mr. Payne. Nevertheless, the court accepts this piece of evidence with a huge grain of salt. All right, and then what do we got here? It's still cutting off the screen, but let's see. A newspaper clipping outlining the crime happened at a back alley, questionable due to circumstances surrounding the original evidence. And then when we look at that, uh, July 22nd, the witnesses saw a van drive up to a back alley. The masked man who was dry, who was driver, who was driver, yes, <laughs> took two unconscious men. One of them was Congressman Kanalaroff. The other is unknown, but is suspected to be Woolery Wart. Kanalaroff's page. The masked man puts the two men down before pulling a gun. He shoots it once and then drives away in his van. Witnesses saw no other people in the van. All right, so. If there aren't any more interruptions or pieces of evidence now, I will allow Miss Fay to cross-examine the witness. Maya, this is the first time in court. This is my first time in court. You've talked about cross-exams, but can you tell me it again? Should I take the time to tell about cross-examinations or should I let her watch me work? Just just watch and learn. I don't I don't why do I need a this is a this is a website that somewhat like I played all the games and didn't even realize that this would existed until this summer so just just watch me I don't have time to explain the process just watch me and you'll learn from that oh man <laughs> I'd best not try to break it completely this early let's have it let's have at it slowly Okay, the victim was a well-known poli politician representing our state, but nobody liked- HOLD IT! So the victim was a politician who represented the California's interests? Also, holy crap, that music is loud. I might need to, uh, do that maybe, because wow, that is loud. Um, let's see. So the victim was a politician who was represented- who represents California's interests? Yep, very power, power, powerful politician, pal. But what do you mean by nobody liked him? I'm sorry, Miss Faye, but that question has nothing to do with this testimony at all. But he mentioned it in his in the testimony just now. Seriously? It doesn't matter. This is about the facts of the crime, not the motive! I'm inclined to agree with the prosecution on this one. Objection sustained. Really? Detective, please continue your testimony! He was found in a back alley, lying in a pool of blood. Hold it! Was there anything unusual about the crime scene? Besides the fact that there was a pool of blood around him? No. However, we did find something unusual about the body itself. What is it? Did you know it then? No. Not until we had completed our autopsy report, pal. What was it? OBJECTION! Miss Fay! Did you ever think to look at everything at the autopsy report? Wow. What is the meaning of this? Your Honor, she's badgering the witness and wasting our time! Shut up, I'm not badgering the witness and wasting our time. <laughs> Objection sustained. Witness, you may continue. I guess he hasn't lost it, huh? 
We did a search around the area, and we found a gun and a bullet that matches the gun. Hold it! Despite where it was, the bullet did match the gun. Yes? Here comes the objection. That's about it, pal. What type of gun was it? It's a Colt 45 revolver, pal. A revolver, huh? Better keep a note of that. When we arrived at the crime scene, there were two people, the victim and someone else. Wait a second. Well, I see already- I see some contradictory evidence already after reading it myself, but, by the way, um... When we arrived at the crime scene, there were two people, the victim and someone else. HOLD IT! Who was that someone else? That, unfortunately, is your client. What?! Are you absolutely sure? Unfortunately, yeah, pal. How could a guy so broken have set me up for a trap? Is there anything you would want to ask the witness? Uh, let's ask that in a little bit. I have nothing to ask at this time. Witness, you may repeat your testimony once more. Here it is, the first cross-exam. I kind of see what's going on here, but I'm not sure. Well, here's my first question. How does the testimony sound so far? Vague? Concise? I think it's mostly concise, but there's something vague about it. I guess it can't hurt to press. I'd have to agree with your assessment. I'd better get some more information out of Gumshoe before I can attack. So, wait. Okay, well that was it then. Oops. Okay, one, two, three, four. Um. Let's do that and shut up, shut up, shut up. Skip, skip, skip a roo. Bang on the gavel. Yes, state of my client. Yes, what was the state of my client? Well, he was knocked out when we got there, pal. Revolver was next to him. We put two and two together. All right, detective. Please add that statement to your testimony. I don't see how it's going to help the defense, but the fact that the gun was next to him made him highly likely that he committed the crime. What? <sighs> what? That that doesn't make him highly likely at all. The murderer could have freaking planted the gun there. Hold it! So you really believe that this was this is mo why my client committed the murder? Is that really the case? This is the reason enough. This is reason enough to me. Really? I see no problem with that, unless you think otherwise. Just what kind of logic is the prosecution running with this? It makes no sense at all! Okay, okay, okay... Okay, let's see... I already see the problem.
Objection! Wait. Objection! Detective! Yeah? What is it? Let me summarize the reason my client was arrested. He was knocked out at the crime scene and he had a gun next to him when you arrived, yes? I couldn't have said it better myself, pal. <laughs> Detective, did you forget something? What are you talking about, pal? I mean, the fingerprints on the gun. Yeah, they belong to the defendant, of course. <laughs> or was it someone else? Mm, yes. Look over there and there and ooh, what's that up there? <laughs> Is that so? Then I have a huge problem with the murder weapon. Miss Faye, what are you talking about? If you look at the gun, you will know what I'm talking about. Hack! You don't mean... Yes, according to the court record, the gun bears unidentified fingerprints. What?! Order! ORDER! Miss Fay, please explain yourself. Your Honor, the report here is true. If the report here is true, then the gun cannot have belonged to my client. The fingerprints are unidentified! Oh, oh, oh! Your Honor, I believe the detective needs to give another testimony! He forgot some details, that's all! Mr. Payne. I'm really not impressed, because I'm in a bad mood, too. I should give you a penalty. I would have hoped that the good detective would have explained everything in the first shot. What the heck's happened to the sound? <laughs> Your Honor! I believe he's right! Oh? Oh? <laughs> I had forgotten to explain everything that has to do with the gun itself, sir. <laughs> Miss Faye, do you object? No objections, Your Honor. Although I would like it if the, uh, if the witness would say everything from the get-go. Very well, then. Detective, please explain to the court everything you know about the co gun, and don't leave anything out! Yes, Your Honor. I hope his testimony clears up the situation with the gun. Alright. This part of the gun, this particular gun, is a Colt 45. The gun itself is an uncommon gun in the underworld. We checked the barrel. It shows the gun is, has been pot fired twice. Admittedly, as Miss Faye said, there are unidentified fingerprints on it. The victim was killed, execution style. Let me do a grin while saying that too. The evidence points away from the defendant, but the defendant himself places him on the, at the crime. Hmm... Despite the earlier mistake, this is quite solid. I feel as if we have learned everything about this gun. Are you kidding me? The testimony is even weaker than before. Sis, that didn't even sound like a solid testimony. Wow. <laughs> You're right, Maya. This is not a solid testimony at all. Did Mr. Payne get so bad that he couldn't fix that disastrous testimony? That's unbelievable. I see no reason to continue this cross-examination. What the hell? Your, your honor, I can't allow you to stop this cross-examination. Miss Faye, you are stalling for time. The detective told us everything all that he's needed to tell us. Objection. OBJECTION! The defense has the right to cross-examine this witness. 
Objection overruled, Mr. Payne. I will allow the defense to cross-examine the witness. Let's expose that flawed logic in that testimony 